what is up guys I got a little bit of an update for you with the Z dealing with some problems right now I'm not really excited about it but shouldn't be too hard to fix so the only problem I have is it's super hot right now but uh, let me show you what's going on right now with the Z and why I'm not really thrilled this is my problem right here let me let me, let me get some light up in this I don't even know if you can see this I don't really know if you can see this that well it's hard to see on the camera but right here the radiators cracked so yeah before the problem with this was these fan motors went out well at least this one did anyway I replaced it it overheated and everything I had to make my own tabs for it and all too uh, I'll show you how I did that whenever I get this ripped out and then as soon as I was bleeding all this it was running for like 20 minutes too so so after having it run for about 20 minutes bleeding all the air Got the release valve back here, this little guy. I just drove it down the street, next thing you know, pop the hood, smoke everywhere, radiator cracked. So that was fun, just drove it back, wasn't even mad. Because the drift event last time with the 240, why I don't really have a video for that, the head of the bolt that holds the alternator onto the 240 snapped off. So I am running the Nissan Quest alternator with that turn this down so I am running the Nissan Quest alternator on the 240 so I was able to go to AutoZone and get a new one the pulley kind of got stuck somehow but once it was off you could free spin the pulley all day but as soon as they had tension to it it would just lock up and just the belt would just spin over and it wouldn't even turn we put a socket on the alternator pulley and as we would turn it it actually turned the crank with it too so we really weren't sure what the problem was AutoZone did test the alternator and it came back bad so Got a new one, luckily they had one, threw it back on there. But by the time we got it back on there, it was too late to go drift again, so. Main thing, I was just worried about getting back to the house, so. And then the next day I come to work on this so I could drive it. Let's get straight to this radiator change. So, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna walk you guys through the steps in case you're doing it yourself. It's really not that bad. The only worst part about this is bleeding the coolant because it takes forever. The last time I had to do this, it took me three days because I just could not get all of the air out of it and it drove me insane. I'm going to get this thing up on some blocks, jack it up, and then get started. Alright, so first thing you want to do is get it up on jack stands and everything. You don't want the radiator to be at the highest point when you start the bleeding process. So, Plus you got to get under it anyway to unhook the things I'm about to show you when I get under there. The right, first thing I'm going to do is take off this lower radiator hose. One clippy boy right here, just move this back. So then get you a little get you a little oil pan or something to catch all the coolant that comes down. Alright, the next thing you want to do is unclip the two clips on the bottom of the radiator fan so you can pull the radiator fan out with the shroud and everything. Oh, let me see if I can get this. And that's it for those two clips. Alright, next thing you want to do, there's two bolts holding on the radiator fan shroud assembly. There's one here, one on the opposite side over here. Right, so you can take off that this out of the way like that behind there now we're gonna take these two bolts off and then we can pull the fan shroud up uh, I did forget to mention that you have to undo the top radiator hose to pull the fan shroud out trust me I tried to do it without it because I didn't want to but that's just how you got to do it I guess that's one way to do it. I uh, kind of chipped the bottom of this right here. Not really excited about that, but it happens. All right, now we got that out of the way. Just got to undo these tabs here. Pull these up. One on this side. Pull that off. And 
I don't think it's bolted down on the bottom, so. All right, so I just actually looked up how to actually take this off. Normally I just go for it because it's pretty straightforward, but there's a few hidden hidden treats here that you gotta do beforehand to get all this stuff out. So I'm gonna show you that. You have to undo these little clippy trap door things. Well, that came off pretty easy. Thought I was gonna need to use this. All right, whatever, dude. All right, the condenser is actually held onto the radiator, so I couldn't really get it out. So I got one 10 mil there. Focus, focus, you can do it. You can do it, there we go. Got one 10 mil here. Got another 10 mil right here. So gonna undo that, and then hopefully we can mandangle this thing out of here. All right, I went underneath. There's two rubber grommets kind of hold it in the bottom. I just had to use some force to push those out a little bit. So that we can free it up and you know hopefully it comes out <sighs> all right that was a huge pain in the ass you got caught in the ac condenser just gotta make sure you gotta get that out of the way a little bit Got the old one out. Bunch of, bunch of trash in there. Let's see if I can show you guys where this cracked. Yep, right there, dads. Boop! Seven years of one of this car, I guess it's okay that it finally went out. Whatever. Got the new one in the box here. Throw that piece of shit there. All right. All right, you will need to get the rubber grommets that came from your old radiator and swap them over to the new one. Two big ones are the ones that go on top. These two small ones go on the... Wait. <laughs> All right. These two big ones go on the bottom. And then the two small ones go on the top. Uh, these fit a little bit loose compared to the other one. But, I mean, they work the same way. Then I'm going to stick these two on the bottom here. Hope that'll make it a little bit easier to go in there. Now for the real fun part is putting everything back in there without breaking more stuff. Woo! Oh, that's such a breeze. Your main problem is going to be getting the condenser out of the way so that you can get the tabs that go on the bottom of the radiator to go in. Alright, so I got the bottom rubber tabs in. It's a real pain in the ass in case you were wondering. Now we got to put the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the condenser onto the radiator itself. I already went ahead and put these little tabs back in to hold the radiator nice and tight. So it's not going anywhere. So yeah, put these two 10 mils in right now. All right, so the condenser goes on top of the radiator tab that's down there a certain way. So I do maneuver that around a bunch of times to get that straight so that these 10 millimeter would line up in there. So put those back in, put these little clippy boys back in there. Now time to put the radiator fan assembly back in here. Don't put the hoses back on yet because you Got to put the fan in first. All right, just to show you guys what I had to fix on this, I made these little kind of like washer things out of like some aluminum that I had laying around because the old motor burned up all this wiring and melted these tabs off that the motor holds on to. So there's a plastic little tab in there. That melted off, so I had to make these. Otherwise, I would need a whole new shot assembly, and I didn't want to do that because... Why not do it when you can just fix it? But if this comes off and the fan gets a little wobbly, I'm gonna be destroying some shit. Anywho, let's get this thing put in. All right, so everything is nice and tight in there. Everything's good to go. Time to add some coolant and start this whole bleeding process. Just have this regular funnel here. Uh, I put some electrical tape on the inside to give it a little bit of a tighter fit and just went around it so that 
uh, coolant doesn't come out from this. They make special funnels to bleed coolant, but they're like 30, 40 bucks. And for something I'm not really gonna use that much, there's really no point in me buying it. But if you wanna make it easier, go ahead and do that. Definitely probably makes this less of a headache than what this is gonna be. So let's put some coolant in there. I have read that you wanna do this kinda of slow. Maybe not as slow as this, but you wanna prevent as many air bubbles as you possibly can. And all I have to do is put in like the green coolant and the Z's 50-50. Uh, Just buy the 100% concentrate stuff from Walmart. That way you can half it yourself so you have two gallons instead of just one. Because the other one you're just buying water with the coolant mixed already. And this, I mean it's easier to deal with but if you just buy the whole concentrate you'll have two gallons. You will have to squeeze these hoses quite a few times to get any air out while you're doing this. I'm trying to get the air out as much as I can with just doing the hoses. There's a bleeder valve back there in that area and we'll we'll get to that next. So I filled this up some all the way to the top and then I went back here. Now this is where the battery tray is. Battery tray. Then right back here there's a bleeder screw. Let me see if I can focus on this. Yeah, that guy right there. You take that, unscrew it a little bit. I filled the funnel up pretty high. And then I just unscrewed that, let some coolant flow out of there to get rid of the rest of the bubbles and everything in there. And now I'm gonna fill it up a little bit more. Let the car run, see if I can get some more air out of it. All right, you will wanna run this on full heat. Full blast, all that fun stuff. Burn your ass off some more. All right, with everything running, you're just gonna to wanna to get it up to heating temperature and then play with the hoses some more to get all the air out. All right, I have the radiator cap back on. I'm getting in here with the bleeder valve to let out more air. Not really sure if you can see it. See if I can get a good angle. Yeah, there's some bubbles coming out right there. Yeah, just be careful not to get any of those fumes near you and your nose and stuff because it's not a pleasant taste <laughs> to have. Alright, so I was letting out air from the bleeder valve and all that fun stuff and uh, the other end of it decided to explode off and break. So now, not only do I have to go get more coolant and deal with this shit again, I gotta go replace this. Uh, I'm thinking about going to a parts store, seeing if I can just get like a little T-fitting that has something on top to where I can just bleed it how it is. Maybe get something that's brass or something like that so that this never happens again. I'm super cheesed. Can't catch a break. Woo! Alright, a little bit of back to the, the storytelling if you will. Finally got this thing in the mail. This is the uh, bleeder port for the Z, the one that I just destroyed. I had to wait a few days for it to come in the mail. This is a aluminum one, an aluminum one. Correct grammar, grammar Nazi. And this is what I've been waiting for. Aluminum one, it's got a... <clears throat> it's got the screw on the top here. Nice little brass looking one has these slits in the side. Not sure if you can see that. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but that way you don't have to take the screw out all the way. 
Now we can just crack it open and you'd be good to go. So now let's go install this and see if we can bleed some coolant. Go do some burnouts or something. Because I have had the differential welded. And I haven't gotten to drive it in a while because of this shit and the radiator and you know all that stuff. So Alright, so as you can see this is the old one right here. Hopefully that's in focus. This part just broke off into the hose. I did break the other side out because I couldn't get it out and hopefully none of it fell back into the hose. And this is the new one. As you can see, there's these slits in it so you don't have to take it out all the way. Way better than the plastic stuff. As you can see, it's kind of discolored. I'm guessing it just kind of like rotted away after, you know, all the time, all these heat cycles and everything. So we're gonna, we're gonna get that out of there and put this one in. This is the hose right here going to the firewall. This is the one. Well, let's see. All right, this, yeah, it's this this hose. This, yeah, this one, that one right there. Yeah, whatever. T. All right, I finally got the bleeder T in there. Those clamps just drove me insane, and I was about to like just set my car on fire. <laughs> Not really. I'm just kidding. But I did have to go put some pants on because these mosquitoes are, uh, for lack of a better word, raping me right now. Ah, time to start adding some coolant and see if we get this thing bled. It's gonna take forever. <laughs> all right, time to start it. Let it idle a little bit. Get up to temperature. Check all the uh, the levels. Uh, heat at full blast. Remember, heat at full blast. No AC. None of that fun stuff. All right. Now you do want to block this off because if you don't, fluid will come through here and they go into the reservoir. And mine's a little bit too full right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna squeeze these. Alright, so I can't not figure this out at all. There's so much air in the system that it's like it's draining me. Like I'm running out of air. So I'm going to do this in the morning when there's a lot more light out. So I'm just going to find a nice little spot. Uh, I'm just going to go to sleep here. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning, guys.